Good morning. I think I will get your attention because of just after the tea break. Huh? <laughs> okay, it will be quick uh, because I know you have lots of questions. We'll discuss about some challenges, but before I go to the challenges, I just want to also highlight some of the achievement as well. So, and uh, you know that uh, those are not our of ICG mechanism uh, to highlight that we have some mandates and we work on those mandates. That is number one is like, we need to make sure that the country has the access to the all ICG emergency stockpile for yellow fever, Ebola, cholera and meningitis. And it should be available with equitable access. And another one will be that ICG mechanism also makes sure that the vaccine should be arriving in the country on timely manner to the targeted people, those needs those vaccine. So those are the two mandates and ICG mechanism works around those mechanisms. So since I, I will give you like, since the establishment of ICG stockpile in 2013, but uh, I am giving you the, data for 2016 to 2020 here, like we have sent 55 million doses for 20 countries. And you can see that the, um, the countries are mostly in Africa and Southeast Asia, and one is in Haiti. So uh, maybe that can be a good source of information and uh, food for thought that why we need to focus more so another achievement is like for the ICG decision making process, all the ICG members are here and they are living in different uh, time zone, but we have 48 hours decision making process and they all made it. And you, you can see that from 2016 to 2022, uh, the target for decision making process is two days. 89% of the target, uh, all, 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 the, all the requests were on target. And between 28 to 22, it has been improved also, and it is 97%. Now the challenges. And I know that many countries uh, were discussing about the doses were not released for the second round. Now, then you will understand now that why it was not released uh, for the second round doses uh, sometimes, yeah. So you can see that uh, from 2017 and 2022, there is a significant increase of the demand and supply side. Like uh, in 2019, you can see that we have got more than 30 million doses request from different countries from and ICG approved almost 15 million doses during the, uh, that year. 2020, like all you mentioned that COVID has a good impact because we didn't experience many cholera outbreak during that time. Not only cholera, actually, we didn't receive many yellow fever, meningitis, or Ebola requests during that, uh, during that period in 2020. So should we expect that COVID continues so that we have less cholera outbreak and other outbreaks? Good question, huh? Yeah, so and in 2021 and 2022, you can see that the demand and supply has been, demand has increased, but what about the supply? We'll, we'll talk about it then now. Here, that is the average number of requests. You can see that in 2017, the country requested on an average, it was like 769,000, uh, the volume of the request was on, on an average. But in 2019, it became 1.6 million for each country. And in 2022, the request came for on an average for 2.8 million. So you can see that what a sharp increase of demand over the period of time from the countries. And it is like, that means the extent of the outbreak has been spread it and also the demand has been increased. And at the same time, ICG approved less than a million, half million in 2017, where for each country, where in 2022, you can see 
we uh, ICG members approved almost 2 million doses for each country on an average. Now the supply side, you can see that uh, here, uh, the orange line, it shows that it, the emergency recommended stockpile size that was 3 million in 2019. And the gray line shows the doses approved and the blue line shows the doses available. And you can see the fluctuation of the availability of the doses over different uh, times of the year. And sometimes here the green line shows the green arrow that sometimes the ICG members had to uh, approve the request uh, with some recommendation, like they adjusted the uh, doses, like they approved sometimes one dose, or sometimes they delayed the supply of second round doses because of this situation. In 2020, I'm not presenting the data here because the situation was not uh, very uh, bad, like I mentioned. And, uh, but in 2021, it became more uh, coarse actually. You can see that uh, the, the supply side and the demand side, you, we have doses available and in some point it, it went down almost uh, like uh, here in the baseline. So, and uh, we, we had to, compromise also about the decision-making process, like the ICG members, they had to deal with the situation in several times, in several, uh, for several requests came from the country. So it, it clearly shows that uh, the ICG, uh, the demand has been increased, but at the same time, our supply had a, had a constraint. So what solutions actually the ICG members took to avoid this kind of situation. So like we, in the last three years, the ICG members took the decision to increase the stockpile size. I will present it in the next slide. Then ICG approved two round campaigns, but only first doses of the campaign were shipped in some, in many cases. And second doses of the uh, campaign release or conditional like after receiving the country report and also the possibility at that moment, that also led the discussion among the SG members to release the second round doses. So that's why sometimes, yeah, the, the doses you didn't receive because of that uh, supply uh, problem. And sometimes um, the ICG members actually partially approved the request. So about the stockpile size, it was 2 million doses available at all the time before 2018. And in September ICG annual meeting, the ICG members decided to increase the stockpile size from two to 3 million at all times. Then again in 2021 ICG annual meeting, the ICG members decided to increase the stockpile size from 3 million to 5 million doses. We have also some challenges um, like uh, about uh, the delay in the vaccine arrival in the country. Uh, like we have a target of seven days when the IC members approve the request, then the vaccine should be arrived in the country within seven days. But we have found some difficulties because of this. You can see that because of the COVID and after COVID period, the cargo flights availability, cargo space availability were uh, also a challenge. Now it's also, it remains as a challenge. Cold chain capacity in the country level, like most of you mentioned, you had a, an issue and that also delayed the, to get green signal or green lights from the country to receive the vaccine. And that delayed the uh, 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 arrival of the vaccine in the country. And the, normally the target is seven days, but on an average for the last five years, we found that the average of 16 days uh, for the uh, arrival of the vaccine. But then we need to think about this, that how the country can improve the cold chain capacity and how quickly the country can give 
the initial supply division, the green signal. So we are ready to receive the vaccine. Please send the vaccine. So we have to work uh, hand in hand. And then late implementation of the campaign, like uh, we want that ICG mandate. We, if you see the decision summary, you will find that it is mentioned clearly every time that you have to start the campaign within 10 days after you receive the vaccine in the country. And why that is, you know, because the more rapid you will do the outbreak response, you, response, you will be able to contain the disease. You, there will be less morbidity and more mortality. So that is the main uh, uh, objective, one of the objectives of ICG mechanism to establish. So you can see that the target is 10, 10 days, but uh, on an average for the last five, years, the average was almost a month. So country started the campaign after one month after receiving the vaccine. And there are some proportional issues at the country level, funding issues, uh, selection of the priority over other disease that is also an issue, security, remoteness. These are not only our findings. Actually, we did the study for the last five years we send a questionnaire to the country, we gather information from the country team, and we did the study, and that, that is the findings actually from the country, why the campaign was delayed. It's not ICG secretariat findings, actually. We did just the... So how we can overcome this? As we are representing here, I am presenting the only ICG perspective, not the GTFCC here. So you can see all the data are related to the ICG mechanism and oil ICG approved reactive campaign uh, doses. So how ICG secretariat can help to improve the situation. So we are um, trying to update the ICG OCB request form and the annexes with the consultation with the technical teams and ICG members. So that it will be more simpler and user friendly so that country can quickly fill the form and send the request to the ICG secretary, because we found that that also takes so long to receive the request. We have already opened the open WHO training on ICG mechanism, but also we are trying to develop the online training, how to fill up the form, how to uh, 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 populate the, the, the information. So, and justification, rationale, all those things, we are all, uh, also planning to develop that training module online. And we are planning to do the capacity building of the stakeholders and even on-site training, country visit to the um, high priority countries. We have already started three-level technical call in engaging the head office, um, regional office, country office, and uh, Ministry of Health. And also we have all started discussion with the ICG members because sometimes we found that uh, to get, get the country context, it is important that ICG members talk to the country and they understand the situation that helps a lot to quickly approve the application. So we, are also, we have already started this and we want that we will continue this. And we also want that the ICG members like WHO, UNICEF, MSF, IFRC, those are also present at the country level. They should be engaged in the outbreak response activities. So I think the ICG members, they can also convey that message to the country from their own source. So for more information, we have ICG website. You can click there, you will find this. And for the training I was uh, talking about, on ICG mechanism, you have that training already. You can um, uh, check that online. You can uh, have a, you can join, it's free. It will take only 30 minutes, but it will give you a very a lot of information about ICG mechanism. So thank you very much. Thanks for your time. <laughs>